Hi, my name is Emily Town, and I'm a graduate assistant within the Wall College of Business, and I'm a member of the Wall Fellows Program Class of 2020. In this PDA, we will be diving into the topic of becoming a leader. We will start by defining a leader and the qualities they possess. We will then explore leadership theory, followed by some examples of how you can become a leader in college. We will conclude with a final takeaway for you to consider when thinking about becoming a leader. Have you ever wondered how to become a leader? What is a leader? What defines a leader? Or even who determines who to follow? By definition, a leader is a person who inspires or influences others toward achieving a goal. Leaders can bring people together to accomplish something that their followers may not have been able to do on their own. Leaders have a vision and a mission that motivate others to move. People who are able to move others often share similar qualities. Take about 30 seconds to write down qualities that you think a leader possesses. When I think of a leader, I think about people like Abraham Lincoln, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, and Billy Graham. People gathered around these individuals and were willing to hear what they had to say. These individuals possessed many qualities of leadership, including integrity, gratitude, communication skills, empathy, the ability to delegate, courage, self-awareness, and respect. They knew their values and stood by them. They showed courage in times of objection and communicated effectively about their missions and beliefs. People followed and rallied behind these individuals because they believed in what they stood for. Think about people throughout history who have been able to bring many people together towards achieving a common goal. Now, consider people in your own life who are leaders. Do they possess these qualities? Think about why you follow them. What makes you follow them? There have been many theories that have been developed about leadership, including the theories of transformational leadership, servant leadership, authentic leadership, and Maxwell's levels of leadership. Experts have studied leaders for centuries in order to understand the questions of who leaders are and why people choose to follow them. Let's take a look at transformational leadership first. Leadership expert James Burns said that transformational leaders are those who seek to change existing thoughts, techniques, and goals for better results and the greater good. There are four key elements believed to make up a transformational leader. Idealized influence, inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, and individualized consideration. Idealized influence pertains to the ethical behavior of the leader. Ideally, a leader would have a strong moral code that guides them and that others choose to follow or emulate in their own lives. Inspirational motivation is the vision and mission of the leader. Leaders are able to motivate their followers, and as we defined earlier, they inspire their followers to action. Intellectual stimulation involves stimulating the minds of followers and bringing in their ideas. A transformational leader encourages their followers to think for themselves and develop their own opinions. Individualized consideration refers to how well a leader addresses the needs and talents of their individual followers. They build up their followers and support them. Now, let's take a look at the theory of servant leadership. Servant leadership also involves four elements, service, collaborative authority, mentoring, and foresight. 
Servant leadership is first and foremost service. A servant leader serves their followers, expecting nothing in return. They naturally tend to the needs of others. In order to make decisions, servant leaders collaborate with their followers, listening to their needs and ideas. They have the final authority to make the decision, but consider others' opinions before jumping to their own conclusions. They also address the needs of their followers through mentoring. Mentoring involves training, advising, and guiding. Being a servant leader also invo involves foresight, basically predicting what is coming based on what they have gathered from those around them. Servant leaders take in what others are telling them and can make a guided decision about which direction to move. Overall, servant leaders search out ways that they can serve others and fulfill their needs. The next theory of leadership we are going to look at is authentic leadership. Authentic leadership is comprised of four main elements, self-awareness, relational transparency, balanced processing, an internalized moral perspective. Self-awareness is as it sounds, being aware of yourself or knowing yourself. An authentic leader can recognize their own strengths and weaknesses and live out their values. Relational transparency deals with honesty and being a genuine individual. An authentic leader is transparent with those around them and does not hide their true selves. Balanced processing is all about fairness and hearing all perspectives before jumping to a conclusion or decision. Authentic leaders will listen to those around them being fair-minded. Lastly, internalized moral perspective involves doing the right thing, is standing up for your values and morals, even when it's not easy. When you bring all of these elements together, self-awareness, relational transparency, balanced processing, and internalized moral perspective, you get an authentic leader who is led by their values, is genuine in their approach, and does what they say they are going to do. The final leadership theory that we are going to discuss is John Maxwell's levels of leadership. John Maxwell is a leadership expert and author who has spent a great deal of his life learning about leadership and mentoring others, including executives in Fortune 500 companies. Maxwell developed a pyramid that he has identified as the five levels of leadership. At the foundation is position, then permission, production, people development, and at the top, pinnacle. At its foundation, Maxwell asserts that someone can be a leader based on their position. People follow a leader at this level because they have to, either because the leader is a supervisor or has some kind of authority over the follower that is given to them based on a title or role within a relationship or organization, like a manager in charge of associates. At the bare minimum, this level is a follower doing what they are told or required to do. They may have no feeling or connection to the leader or organization. In order to develop a connection with their followers, leaders need to move from a position leadership to permission leadership. At leadership level two, people follow a leader because they want to and because they believe in the leader. Followers feel like they have permission to bring ideas and concerns to the leader who will show them respect and trust. There is a greater connection between leader and follower because the leader knows their team and knows how to utilize and praise them effectively. This level goes beyond superior to inferior relationships and following orders. It involves collaboration. The next level of leadership is achieved through results. At the production level of leadership, people follow a leader because they see the value the leader creates and the results that they are able to produce. Followers respect a leader at this level and are excited by the leader's vision and goals. This leader leads by example and gets work done, while also recognizing the efforts of their followers in achieving the goals together. Being a leader at the production level also involves helping others achieve their goals. The fourth level of leadership involves people development through empowerment. People follow leaders at this level because they feel empowered by the leader. Ultimately, leaders at this level should be developing and mentoring their followers to be leaders. 
They will be able to delegate the responsibilities and further grow themselves if a leader is successful in empowering others to be leaders. At the very top of the pyramid is the pinnacle level of leadership. Here, people follow a leader because of their reputation and charisma. People are drawn to these leaders because they change organizations and even have the ability to change society. Examples of leaders at this level include Nelson Mandela and John F. Kennedy. Now that we've discussed what defines a leader, what the qualities of a leader are, and some theories on leadership, let's consider how to become a leader in college. When I first decided that I wanted to be a leader in college, I started by finding my niche or my place on campus. There are dozens of clubs and organizations to get involved in on campus, so choose a few that you are interested in and participate in their meetings or events. Once you figure out your niche on campus and begin to participate, you can discover your role within the organization. Are you a planner who wants to help them plan events? Can you bring people together to attend events? Do you like working on a team to develop ideas? After discovering your role within the organization, the next step is to lead and to lead by example. A club or organization will run the way in which its leaders lead and with the integrity that they uphold. Some leadership opportunities at Coastal Carolina include becoming a resident advisor, joining an organization within your major, joining a leadership development program, and even joining student government. Let's dive into becoming an RA. Some of the responsibilities of an RA include community development, engagement, being a team member, being a role model, and helping with facilities and operations. You can read more about this in the attached documents. Joining an organization within your major in the Wall College, specifically, we have uh, organizations for every major. Whether you are a marketing major and want to participate in the American Marketing Association, or even an accounting major and want to participate in Beta Alpha Psi, you can see the full list on the website at Coastal Carolina at coastal.edu um, and look for the business organizations. You can also participate uh, by being an officer with on, uh, within the college. So to be a leader with at these, you need to be at events and take action. You can help plan events for the major um, organizations. And you can also become an officer, like being president, uh, vice president, secretary, your treasurer. There are also a variety of leadership organizations on campus and leadership programs. Specifically, two that come to mind within the uh, Wall College are the Wall Fellows Program and the Kobe Institute. Look into these uh, programs on Coastal's webpage to see more about what these programs involve and how you can learn to be a leader through them. There's also student government on campus. And in student government, you there's a variety of levels of leadership that you can get involved with. At its lowest level is becoming a senator. Then you can become a committee chair and be involved with uh, the different committees that the student government has. And then you can also participate on the executive board. So on the executive board, there's the president, vice president, uh, vice president of finance, and then the vice president of public relations. And they also have a chief of staff position and a chief of justice position. So now that we've talked about leadership and how to become a leader and become involved on campus, I wanna leave you with this quote by Ann Fudge, who was a CEO of Young and Rubicam. Leadership is leaving something lasting, whether it is how you treat people or how you deal with a problem. So don't forget that even though you ha may have a mission or goal in mind, you must treat people well and then learn how to deal with the problem well. Thank you for listening and have a great day.